a very good evening. Um, I'm glad you can uh, join me on this very, very cold evening. Must admit, I'm in my garage, as most of you know, is my workshop. And to say I'm freezing is an understatement. But anyway, I'm here, I'm live, and I think the cold is keeping me alive. Let me just take off my glasses because I've always, I always say, I can't see a damn thing when I'm looking at my phone. I just want to see um, who's with us today now there is a lag by the way of about 10 seconds from me speaking to me answering any questions that you're going to ask so let's have a look who is in the house uh, we've got sam samantha um hi there sam good to see you we've got liz bond hello liz nice to see you hope you're well we've got uh, laura laura i hope you're going to um be good we've got joe madeline's watching hi there joe we've got julie uh, watching I do believe Julie is a Powertex um, teacher. We've got Ian. Hi there, Ian. Good to see you. We've also got Michelle. Uh, Sam said, oi oi. I don't know what she means by that. We've got Heather Carpenter. Hello there. And Laura is saying Michelle is here as well. Yeah. So there we go. Uh, we've got hi Sam from Ian. And uh, we've got Claire at the bottom there saying hello, Anthony and everybody. Right, well. I'll, I'll put my glasses on now until I see any other comments come up on the bottom of the screen. Well, we've got loads um, to, to get through. Um, the canvas that we're actually going to be doing, to, well, I say doing, I've already done it actually, but it's this one here, um, which is, there we go, there we go, which is um, Azuri Mold, which is this one here, which I do believe is called the Blue Angel. I think I'm right in saying. And we've got a couple up here that are from Prima Redesign. So all of these are available um, to purchase. Obviously, um, the Azuri Molds are a little bit more difficult to get hold of. I do believe there's only three people, including the craft store in the UK, who actually sell those. But I'll be telling you where you can go and get some craft supplies a little bit later in the live. Now, what I must say straight away is um, the actual canvas itself did take oh, probably close to two days. So you'll be glad to know that I've sort of like uh, compressed it slightly and put it into um, this Facebook. So although it's alive, it's not alive, if you know what I mean. But I think we did that last time and it worked quite well. So it takes out all of the drying time and you get to see it near enough as smooth as possible. So let's have a look. We've got Kay. Ah, oh, hello there, Kay. Very good that you could uh, join us. Now, obviously everyone knows Kay, um, the lady of green and obviously the hoogie board. So um, hi there, um, Kay, glad you could join us. So let's get on with it I'm gonna I'm gonna pop my glasses on back straight away and we're just gonna go to um, the other camera which is this one here which shows us all of um, the sort of things we're gonna be using now to produce this um, a lot of people have asked about this um, background um, that I've got here now this is actually created by a product um, from Viva Decor but you can actually get um, almost an identical product from That's Crafty, which is the texture paste. So that's going to be coming a little bit later on the live and um, I'll show you how I created everything. But you know what? Without further ado, let's actually get into that project and start with basically what is step one. So we have our beautiful angel design here, a seated angel from Zuri. Now what I've actually done with this one, I have used the air drying clay. Now you can use anything from hearty to FMM to DAS clay, entirely up to you. Now when you've done that, you can actually colour the clay or you can leave it and colour everything after, entirely up to you. If you're going to colour things afterwards, the one problem you may have is trying to get the skin tone. So that's what I'm going to show you on this part of a demonstration, how to get the perfect skin tone. And you may be surprised at what colours you actually use to get the skin tone. So the sort of the colour we're wanting to mix up is this one here, which is like a skin tone colour. There's also a lighter version there, so it's, it's up to you. So to get this sort of colour, 
The colours you're actually going to need are a white acrylic paint and then you can use any type of medium that you so wish but it's got to be an orange and it's got to be a magenta. So what we're going to do, just make sure that you mix up enough of the paint to start with. So I'm going to put a fair amount of the white paint on just there. Okay, and then we're going to mix in our two colours. So like I said, the two colours are a magenta colour Okay, which is just there. Okay, and then just simply just mix that in using a paintbrush. So let's just grab the paint and just mix that in. Okay, start off with a small amount. You can always add the colour, it's more difficult to take it away. So there we go. So we've just got a little tone of the pink in there. So we're just going to add a little bit more. So again, just pop that onto your non-stick surface or your glass mat, wherever you do your, your colour mixing. And then just take that colour in. Okay. Make sure that you thoroughly mix all the paint and then you're going to be good to go. So at the moment we've got like a, a pink colour going on there. Okay, but it's sort of like quite pale really. So I'm just going to grab our sheet of paper that has the colour that we're aiming for, okay, which is this one here. I'm just going to pop that by the side. So at the moment, we're nothing like it at all. So it needs a little bit of warmth in there. Okay, so the colour you're going to want to pop in next is the orange. Okay, so again, I'm just going to pop a little bit of orange, okay, onto our mixing palette. And then we're going to mix that in. Okay, so again, thoroughly mix it in. Okay. So grab all your paint and keep on going. Okay. So just keep on checking to see if you've achieved the right sort of colour. Another thing to do is to actually paint it onto the tip of your finger and that will give you a pretty good idea as well. But I'm just going to bring in our colour palette again so you can see now we're achieving almost the colour that we have here. And in actual fact that's not too bad. Maybe I just want to add a little bit more of the magenta. So I'm just going to pop that up here okay, and mix that in. And then we'll have a look at the orange again. And again, just going to go for some orange. Just there. We're going to have quite a lot of that because we really want to warm that skin tone up. At the moment it looks a little bit on the cold side. Okay, so just drag all that colour, paint, and give that a good old mix. So it's always best to mix up quite a bit of the colour that you actually want. So then if you do have to patch anything in, you've got it there for a later date. Okay, let's have a look and see how that colour tone is going. I actually want a really pale sort of skin tone colour anyway. And if you want deeper then just add more of the colour. So let's just have a look. Do you know what? I think I'm going to go, go for that. Okay. So I've gone for a really light skin tone colour there. So it's then just directly onto your piece you're working with. I'm just going to paint that in. Now if 
you are using paper air drying clay, then what I'd recommend is that you just leave that to air dry for about 15 minutes and then we can add a little bit of tone to that skin colour. So we have the skin tone done, we're just going to add a little bit of a darker tone. So the colour we're going to want to be using is the orange. So just add a little bit of orange down there, a little bit of the paint. Okay, obviously you don't want it too dark, so just keep on adding adding the white, or the, the original skin tone colour, should I say. So just keep on using that. So at the moment it is quite orange, so just keep on adding the white back into it. Okay, so just give that a little bit of a mix. Okay, just keep on adding that original skin tone colour. And then if you've got your original palette that you did, just pop some down by the colour that you achieved to start, which is this one here. So there we go, we've got that distinctive change of colour there. Okay, so once you've got to that, take off the majority of the paint on your brush because we're going to be using the, the dry brush technique now. Okay, let's just make sure you have the majority of that off. Okay, and then using your brush just very very gently just go over and it's literally just almost tickling the top of the clay just build it up just very very lightly okay so it's just literally just touching the very high points of the, the cast. So just keep on going round, like I say, making sure that you haven't got too much paint on your brush. And then just keep on building, building the colour up to get that darker skin tone. And it's just going to bring out some of the, like the shadows and the shading of the skin. Okay. So now I'm getting a really nice, um, just tonal change of skin. We're just going to go a shade darker. So again, we're just going to use our orange. Pop that onto the pad. I'm just going to introduce a little bit more of the orange into our mix. Like I say, you do have to be really quite subtle about it. just mix that in so now we've got quite a bit of a darker tone there to what we originally had so again I'm just going to bring in our original piece here I'm just going to pop that down the side so you can see we've gone that shade darker again okay and like we did before I'm just going to change this round okay so I'm just going to take off take off that paint that's on our brush so there's very little paint going on again and I'm just going to brush over those same parts on the skin again just to add an even darker skin tone to that and as I said you do really want it so it's subtle, so it's not a real big difference in change. It's a very, very um, soft change of colour from one to the other. So I'm just going to go in there. I'm just going to add a little bit more of the colour back onto the brush. And just go down there. And there is our little angel there with the skin tone just nice so if you want you can go back over with a lighter color and maybe highlight some areas with some white mixed into our original color but I think I'm going to leave like that and now color the rest of the little angel 
So that is the first part of the project. So as you can see, that's how to actually mix a skin tone color. Now, if you actually have got hearty clay and you have got magenta and you have got orange, then obviously you can be doing that. Now, I did notice on one of the comments that the music was too loud, so I do apologize, Kay. So I'm gonna speak loud for you now. Right, I said that basically, if you have got, um, or you use hearty soft clay, okay, in any of your molds, and especially um, the Prima and um, the Zuri molds, you'll find they are really, really detailed, probably more so the Zuri. Now, the way I actually do that is to pop the clay into the mold and then I actually put it in the freezer for between 15 minutes and half an hour. It just really does depend how deep the mold is. Then when you take it out of the freezer, it would be absolutely perfect to use. Now you can go onto my YouTube channel and um, have a look at that particular video and here's information on my YouTube channel. <music> we have our own YouTube channel? Head over there to find Facebook Lives, inspiration, craft demos, exclusive videos and product reviews. Whilst you're there, remember to click the like button. Subscribe to our channel and make sure you click the notifications button to receive notifications of brand new videos. Like, subscribe, get notifications youtube.com forward slash c forward slash mixed media arts and crafts so if you head over there you'll find the video on the the freezing of the hearty clay which does sound rather strange but it does work and it also works that same um little trick with das clay as well and you can still achieve a really high quality and high detail or definition of your cast when you pop that even with das clay right so um steve steve-o is in the house do you know what steve-o look at this look at this a purple mug just for you sadly it hasn't got a pint in it has got a very warm coffee and believe me i'm warming my hands at the moment and Kay, I knew it was over, only over the music, but I just wanted to shout anyway. Right, let's carry on with the project. So here's part two. If you are going to be force drying the paint on top of the clay, then just be sure to hold the heat gun a little bit away from the clay so it doesn't bubble up and then you should be OK. So I'm just adding the, the detail on the wings there. So I've done like a brown wash with that. I'm just going to add a little bit of detail now on the hair and then I'll do the clothes as well. So now I'm just going to go in between where the, the chin and the arm and the leg are. So that's, that is hair down there. take our hair colour which is this one just here and we're just going to add a little bit of the white into that okay just like so so you can just see a little bit of white on there and I'm just going to mix that in okay mixing the all of the the dark brown okay and this one here okay right so again we're going to use the the dry brush technique so we want to take the majority of the paint actually off the brush so I'm just going to go onto my glass mat because I've, I've run out of room there okay so just take the majority of that off okay and I'm just going to go on to there and I'm just going to add a few little highlights and that's all it is just adding 
the highlights that are already in place, the, the highest areas of your, your cast piece. Okay. So I'm just going to keep on just going over to building up the colour. You know, that is really quite subtle, but it's just, just nice, just nice. Get a little bit more, just from there. Now this is where you need a, a really steady hand. Okay, now I'm just going to see if I can grab some of that colour there. And see if we can go down to that middle bit just there. Come up this in there. Okay, right. So there we go. So now I'm just going to colour her clothes there. So I think we're gonna go for like pinks and purples. Okay, I've got sort of like a, a purple there, so I'm just going to Add a little bit of white onto our glass mixing mat here. Okay, probably that will do. And then we just want a little bit of this colour here. It's like a purple. Okay, just a tiny little bit. These paints are quite pigmented, so I'm just going to find a reasonable brush to use. <laughs> so let's have a look. Okay, got that one there. Just give that a little bit of a mix in. Okay, like so. And that's the sort of tone I want. I don't want anything really too dark. I think that's probably going to work quite nicely. So I think I'm going to go probably for a wash, I think, with this. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit of water into our paint mix there and then nearly throw the paint over it as you can see so let's just go in with that wash so just be very careful up to that point there and then just let that flow in there so, I guess it's a really, really light, light colour. Okay. So, then I'm just going to just dry that a little bit and then we're just going to wipe it off. enough and then just making sure I've got a fairly clean-ish part of my cloth there okay, without any real dark brown bits on and I'm just going to wipe wipe that off okay right so let me just dry that just start to brush some of that off, wipe that off. Okay, right, so let's have a look, just make sure that I've got all the areas that I want. So just a little bit more paint just there on the underside.
Okay, so we've still got our original colour, which is the skin tone, which is always going to come in handy if you need to touch any bits in. So I'm just going to use some of that. I've just gone into the arm there a little bit. So I'm just going to go over that. And this is using the, the lighter colour that we have. So I'm just going to go, go in there. Just go around the back of the neck. Okay. Okay, we have our original colour there, so I'm just going to add some white just there, and then just going to take some of that colour and we're going to mix it in. So there you go, you can see there the difference we've already got. Okay, so again, I'm just going to dry brush that on, so take a majority of the paint off, and then we're just going to brush that on. So it's literally just picking up on the highlighted areas there of the clothes. There we go. So cloth is just draping down there, that's working really nicely. So just build up the colour, don't try to do it all in one go. Okay, so just a little dob on there. The smaller the amount, the better. Make sure our brush is nice and dry. And I'm just going to take some of that white onto our brush. And we're just going to add that over the top to get some real highlights there. On the cloth that's draped round or draping down there. Okay. Okay, and I'm just going to add a little bit of white also to our feathers. And again, it is just the smallest amount. So now it's time to add a little bit of gold to those wings. I've got two metallics here from um, Prima. We have the ancient coin, we have the gold rush. I think I'm going to go for the ancient coin, which is this one here, because it's a, a little less on the sort of like the gold brassy side. So let's just have a look. Okay, so I'm just going to take some off there literally go onto the mat. I'm just going to start brushing some gold onto the wings there just very very lightly. Okay. Okay there's the beautiful gold on there. So I'm just going to leave that one to dry for a little bit and then we're going to add this one here which is another metallic but this um, is a really beautiful colour it's sort of like a pearl but it, it does sort of like have that blue tinge in so I'm going to put that onto the, the cloth area of the little gown that she's wearing so I'm just going to give this a little bit of a shake okay and I'm just going to open it up like I say, it has got that blue tinge in. Okay, so this one is called a white pearl. So let's just take the, the other seal off. So if you look in there, you maybe, maybe just see, there we go, a little bit of that blue showing through. So again, just like we did the gold, pop that on there. I think you can see the blue straight away there. There we go. Okay, and then we're just going to just very lightly just brush that on. So 
So it's just a hint of that blue, that's nice. Too wild. And there we have our angel all painted up. So we're going to add this now to the bigger project. So the next step is to actually place her within a crescent moon. So we're going to cut a crescent moon using some two millimeter cardboard. Well, that is that part of it. And next is I'm going to, well, I do believe, I, I say, I say, um, that's what's next, but until I press the button, I'm not really totally sure. But next, I think I'm going to actually be cutting um, the moon. Now, with the actual moon itself, you'll see that is quite substantial. It's actually two thicknesses of two millimeter cardboard. Um, and I'll show you how I did that. You know, a lot of people know me for being the, uh, the ninja with a craft knife. But seriously, the very best craft knife I can suggest to you is one of these. It's a Swan Morton craft knife. OK, but it's basically used by surgeons. It's a really good knife. Um, it has a detachable blade so you can just renew them. They're really quite readily available on Amazon etc but seriously I've had this knife for dare I say probably about 25 years and you know you just cannot go wrong it's a metal handle and it's going to last a lifetime right so as well as that we've also got these other molds here and this is from um, one of Prima's molds now if you want some of um, Prima's molds then may I suggest that you go over to this website which is this one just here So please go over to that website. Seriously, it's absolutely amazing. Do you know what? The really best thing about the website is that if you spend £20 or more, you actually get free PMP. You know, you, you seriously cannot go wrong. So please head over to the That's Crafty website and um, fill your baskets for want of a better term. Right, so getting back on with our project, I do believe it's now the moon that I'm going to be cutting out. I'm just drawing in my my moon here or my crescent moon so I'm just using a compass so it's entirely up to you what sort of size you go for but I've rubbed out quite a few lines just to have a play so I think that's probably probably about it so the, the angel will be sitting there sort of like in the crescent moon so I'm going to cut this one out okay so I'm going to show you how to make a nice cut in a two millimeter thick piece of cardboard. So we're going to be cutting a moon shape out of a two millimeter thick piece of cardboard. Now what I would recommend is that you get a brand new blade in your craft knife before you even start. The most important thing also is to remember that you're not going to be cutting through two millimeters of cardboard straight away. So first of all, just place your craft knife into your card. And as you can see, I'm also cutting on a green mat as opposed to the glass mat because I find that easier. And then we are basically just going to start scoring. Okay, so we're not cutting all the way through. We're just scoring just very, very gently the outer line. So just go all the way around. And as you can see what I'm doing, I keep on moving the cardboard as I go. Okay, and then like I say we're just scoring into that cardboard. So just keep on going all the way round. Okay. Turning the cardboard as we go.
OK, so we have gone round once. So now we have a really nice groove for the blade now to travel in. OK, so make sure that when you do your cutting, you keep your blade in an upright position. Now, when I mean upright, OK, I mean that the blade or you're holding, not holding the blade at an angle like so. OK, so just in an upright position and then again, just start to add a little bit of pressure. But your blade is now guided by that original groove that you've actually put in your piece of cardboard. OK, so again, we're not going to be cutting through straight away. We're just going to keep on turning that around, just applying a little bit of pressure. And don't do this fast. So just go at a nice speed so you can apply the pressure and make sure that your blade doesn't come out of that little groove that you originally put in there. OK, so just keep on going around again to the starting position, which was about there. So now you can start to see that the cardboard, if you bend it, you're getting a, a gape there. So we're probably about um, three quarters of the way through. So again, just keep on going round. So apply a little bit more pressure. Okay, twist. Keeping that blade in an upright position. Turn it. So you will notice the blade is not actually coming out of the cardboard at all. It's always left in there. And I can always see where I'm cutting to. So I'm, I'm not hiding any of the, the line or the groove that was originally there. So you always want to see where you're cutting to. Right, I'm going to take the knife out now. As you can see, there's a nice dark score line round. OK, if we go on to the other side, we're not quite through yet, but we're not far away. So just keep on going around, as I've done there, until you're totally through your cardboard. And now I can feel that I've cut through that circle in its entirety so I can lift that away. So you can see that's a really nice clean cut. Now we need to do is just go into the centre part and cut that out in exactly the same way. So for the scalpel blade, Sam, I'll actually show you after this part of the project. Knife is in hand, ready to show you. So there we go. That's how to cut a piece of 2mm cardboard. Now if you want to cut even thicker cardboard, so probably up to about 5mm, just use this sort of technique and you're not going to go far wrong. So we have our crescent moon shape there. I'm just going to add a little bit of texture to that. So I'm going to use some old clay that I've had knocking around for a bit. There's plenty of different colours in there. So I'll just merge them all together. It doesn't really matter about the colour because we're going to paint over it. So I'm just going to use my rolling pin. I'm just going to roll this out to about a thickness of between one and two millimetres. OK, so just keep on... Pushing that down, and it's just got to be big enough, really, to go over our crescent moon. So just keep on taking it aside and just rolling that out. Okay, just pop that on so we're near enough there. So I'm just going to take some clay from that side, pop it there, 
but you get the idea so it's just enough to cover the moon shape okay so allow for shrinkage which is normally between about 10 and 15 percent you can see that is plenty big enough so I'm just going to place that over our moon and then I'm going to use some texture plates. Now I've created these myself using a product from FMM which is called the Soft Then Strong. It's an air drying polymer clay. So in the past when I've done uh, mixed media projects and I've created backgrounds using things like the plaster paste it's created really beautiful texture that I have wanted to replicate. So I've actually used the air drying polymer clay to actually cast from that so you can see the texture that I've actually got on there okay so that's how I've done it I've waited for those to dry now I can actually use these as texture plates so I'm just going to go for possibly a mix of a couple of different ones and I'm just going to press that directly onto our clay okay so that's going to give the moon some texture so there you go you can see straight away if I just hold that one up okay you're going to get instant texture on the moon. So I'm just going to go all the way around there. Just going to keep on moving my texture plate randomly. Okay. So we don't get like a repeating pattern. And just press that over the shape. Okay, so that is the texture for the moon already in place. So now I'm just going to take that off there. I say allowing for shrinkage, obviously, which is about 10 um, to 15 percent. I'm just going to take the rest of the clay off. Okay. And then, if I want, I can possibly reuse that on another part of the project. So again, just go all the way around, allowing for that little bit of shrinkage. Okay. So I'm just going to leave that to dry and then once that is fully dry then I'm going to make sure that the clay is actually stuck to the cardboard and then we can paint over that in whatever colours we so wish. So in the end the angel is going to sit sort of like about there on our crescent moon so probably we go for maybe a silver or grey moon with highlights here and there. Right, we're back at the table. Time to lose my fingers. Well, not really, but right. So this is for um, Sam. Sam wanted to know how to actually change the blade and um, Kay was on hand and that's exactly what I was going to say. Um, basically, um, this is, and by the way, um, Steve-O said, what make is it? It is good old Swan Morton. Okay. So to change the actual blade, okay, you do indeed, like Kay said, you pull it actually or press it from the back here so just put your finger under that part of the blade and then just lift it so you can see that is actually flexing and then quite easily you can take that off now the only reason um, it may be sticking is because little groove okay which is let's have a look see if we can actually come here without it 
blurring too much there we go so we can just about see that groove there make sure that is always nice and clean you can see mine's got a bit of glue stuck in it but as long as that is nice and clean okay let's just wait to readjust into focus there we go so then to put the blade in just quite simply just press that in there and then either use pliers or your fingers and then just snap that back into place so that is how easy it is to actually do that there are two types of blades that you can actually get these are 10a but there's another one that's actually got like a rounded um, blade that's really good if you're scratching away at paint etc um, and is, is great for like mixed media right let's just um, tell you about that's crafty because um, we've got a couple of their design team who are watching and yes they are an extremely um, fast and reliable company and like I say if you order products um, of £20 or over it is free delivery which is fantastic seriously you cannot go wrong if you order from that's crafty so please head over there and you will find everything under one roof and you know I've been looking at a couple of websites today crafting websites and if you order even um, to a value of just over 20 pound you can still be paying that two pound 95 delivery so why pay that two pound 95 delivery when you can buy another crafty product and pop it into your basket and get free delivery right without further ado let's get on with the next part of the project so now we're going to create the texture on the main back panel for our project so I've got a piece of MDF here and I've got some modeling paste and let's see how much we've actually got in there hopefully enough to do this project yeah okay right so I am literally just going to whack this on here okay so we're going to use it all I feel got a fair bit in there okay and we are just going to create ourselves some texture if we've got any lumps in there I'm just going to take those out okay so it's going to get a little bit messy keep on taking that out. I'm just going to use another palette knife here just to get some of that out. Okay. So I just plonk that on there and I'm just going to smooth that out. So I'm just going to place that to one side for the moment and then just using my palette knife it's a bit like icing a cake well maybe you wouldn't want me to ice your cake but we're just gonna smooth that over to start with and then we we'll go back in and we'll add a little bit of texture to that so it's just making sure that we really have enough of the paste to, to cover this piece of MDF <music> going to pounce okay my palette knife just over the top there just like so okay so this is going to be like the night sky so we're actually going to be painting this um, sort of like dark blues and blacks so I will be applying color to this afterwards Okay, so just randomly going over there. So there is our texture. I'm just going to leave that to dry. I've just got a, a reel of tape there, just so it doesn't sit to the surface. I'm just going to lay that on top of there and we can let that dry. Something like that is probably going to take a couple of hours. 
Once it's dry, then we're going to paint that sort of blacks and blues to represent a midnight sky. So it's back to our moon shape now. Now it's all completely dry. I'm just going to take off all of the clay that spills over the edge there. And I'm going to use a craft knife to do that. So I'm just going to flip it over. And then just very carefully, I'm just going to score around quite lightly. Okay, and that will take off all of the clay that we don't need. So just go around like so. Just be careful on the fine bits on the end there. Okay, and again, I'm just going to snip that side as well. And again, we're just going to go on the centre bit there and we'll remove that. If you wish, you can use um, a sandpaper and a block to remove the clay. It's entirely up to you. This is paper air drying clay, so it's really, really nice and easy to, to cut and shape even after it has dried. So let's just take that little bit off there. Okay. Now, the thing we've just got to decide is whether we actually need to glue this into position because we only pressed it down onto the cardboard. It does look pretty good to me. I'm just going to use a sanding block just to go around the edges, just to neaten it up a little bit. <music> can see the, the texture that we have on there so what I'm going to do I'm going to just clear the bench a little bit okay we're still going to be using our messy mat I'm just going to mix up a, a grey sort of a mid-tone grey okay so a little bit of white and then a little bit of black there as well so I'm just using acrylic paint I'll just go for a little bit more of the white and then we're just going to mix that up. Okay, we're going to use a, a large softish brush here. So this is the going to be the colour of the moon. Okay, I think we can go a little bit darker than that. So just add a little bit more of the black acrylic, just a little bit at a time. My golden rule is, you know, you can add colour, it's more difficult to take it away. So again, just mix that in. And there we go. Okay, that's sort of like a nice sort of mid-tone. So just make sure that it's all mixed in. Okay. Now because this is quite a thick object, just be sure to paint the sides or the edges as well as the top. Okay, so we're just going to go on with that. So we're just covering all of that. Okay. So just quickly, the um, the product I actually used to do the texture on the canvas there, okay, you can actually be using the That's Crafty Texture Paste. So that's available from their website as well. Um, and it can be used with stencils. And then I'm just going to blast that with a heat gun just to make sure it's all dry before we go on to the next um, colour. Right, all that is dry now. So now we're going to mix up a darker shade of the grey. So this is the original colour we have here. So I'm just going to put a spot of the black in there. I'm just going to give that a mix up. And this way you can see exactly how much darker your new colour is because you've got your, your original colour by the side of it. So I think we're going to go probably a little bit darker than that maybe. Let's have a look. Yeah, I'm just going to add another dot of the black. 
You want it to be quite recognisable as being a different colour entirely. Let's have a look. That's probably more like it. There we go. Just make sure that, that is mixed in really nicely. Okay. Like so. Once again, we're going to be using the dry brush technique. So for those of you who don't know what the, the dry brush technique is, it's a case of applying the paint with very, very little of the paint actually on your brush. So at the moment, if I was to go over with this paintbrush, there's no way you'd get a, a nice dry brush effect. So as you can see what I'm doing, I'm just taking the paint off there. Okay, so there we go. You can see it's completely loaded, this brush is. So now I've got hardly any paint actually on that brush and I'm going to lightly just stroke over and you can see straight away by doing that I am actually just picking up on the highlights okay or on the highest points actually on our moon there okay so I'm just going to go over over that just very very lightly Okay, you probably won't need any more of the um, paint actually on there. Okay. Now, by the way, so although I mentioned about around. dry brushing at the moment, I have if actually I done a half, an half an hour long video actually showing you the top tips the and techniques that I've learned Quite over the past two years dry brushing. I'll be uploading that onto my YouTube channel really so soon. So if you're interested, um, oh, subscribe to my channel. So I've probably gone a little bit over the top there with when the, it's available. the amount that I've mixed up. So if you want it slightly darker in some areas, then just keep on brushing over just very, very lightly just to pick up on that beautiful texture that we applied using our custom um, texture plates earlier on. So there we go, there is the moon, okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go around the edges. So I'm just going to dry that off beforehand. Okay, so I just dried that off. So at the moment, as you can see on the edges, it's just the, the original colour grey. So I'm just going to go in there and just going to sort of like tap my brush just a little bit randomly, just so we get a nice sort of coloration on there as well so just randomly just the bristles sort of on there and it's going to sort of like replicate that nice sort of coloring that we've got on the top there okay so just keep on going like so okay so that's part of it done. So now we're just going to go, we've got the darker colour there, we're now going to go even lighter. Okay, so even lighter than the grey we have there. So we're going to pop that on. Okay, we're just going to mix that into the original colour that we have there. So again, just mix that in. Okay, make sure you don't get too much of the dark going into that. Okay, again, just load that brush up as best you can. Okay, dry brush technique, so we're going to then knock all that colour off there. Okay, and then we're just going to go in there and we're just going to go in and just add a little bit of that colour just randomly here and there. Obviously, it's going to pick up on the high points that are already there so it's going to colour back over some of the original dark grey that we put on but that's fine okay so the idea is we want the moon to look obviously old and nice and textured and now we're just going to go in with the darker again okay so just go back like I said, it's just about aging the moon so you can keep on going over with different colours until you're happy with the, the overall look. Okay. And the more colours of um, the or, or more colours of the grey tone, the better it's gonna be. Okay, let's just have a look at that. So that's looking 
uh, pretty nice now. So we've got lots of different colours of the grey there. Okay, so I'm just going to just add a little bit more of the darker back in there. Damn, I think my fingers okay. actually were right. showing some so grey paint there. You know, rewind it, have a look. A little bit more of the black. Back in there. Okay. And then after this, we've just got one more colour that we want to add. Okay. Just one more after this. I think we're going to go really quite dark on this one. It's all about layering the colours. Okay. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so again, just take off the majority of the colour. I just want to particularly just sort of like shade just one side of the moon, you know, and hope that that's going to give us like a little bit of dimension to it, even more so. So it's like the, the shading of a ball, it's just like on one edge. Just keep on building up the colour, building up the colour. Okay, let's have a look there. So we're getting there, we're getting there. It's going to take a little bit of time to, to build that up. Let's have a look. Okay, so that's that's sort of it, I think. Okay, right. <clears throat> So now we're just going to have a little bit of a tidy up because we've got one more colour to add and we've got something else to add with that as well. Damn, you all spotted it. Yes, I did have grey fingers after a time. Right, well, we still have, um, I do believe it's three sections of the project to go, but I do realise that we've been on now for an hour. So... I think I sort of like hinted that it's probably going to be a two-parter so I'm not sure when we're going to do the next video it will probably be um, sometime next week um, I'll be honest with you um, I've also got a Facebook live on the That's Crafty Creatives group um, on the 12th I'm back on Selly Telly on the I do believe it's the 14th and 15th with some brand new moulds from a new company to craft. Also just one thing, if anyone um, wants to know where to get heart, I can't even look at, I'm trying to get it so it doesn't shine. There we go. If anyone uses hearty clay and they want it for a really good price, because I do know that there's quite a lot of people out there or, or companies at the moment who are selling it for £9.99. If you want a real big discount off that, then please private message me and I will send you a link to the actual distributor here in the UK. And believe me, you will be shocked at what their price is. OK, so I'm going to say so if you want to know more about Hearty Clay, OK, it's cheaper than everyone else that I am. Um, I've, I've actually and I've done a little bit of research because we all like to find the cheapest products but please um, private message me on messenger and I'll get back to you with the link to that site £6.50 oh who said £6.50 it was me that's what it actually is from this other site and it's totally legitimate um, this particular pack actually came from there so like I say private message me right let's just have a quick look I have to take my glasses off again because I can't see a damn thing right 
let's have a look so uh, um yeah apart apart from all the the messy uh, finger comments uh, i'm not a clean crafter says sam always glue texture paint ink everywhere <laughs> do you know what i am but seriously it, it just doesn't stick to me i can remember once doing a workshop up in tattershaw with joe the lovely joe shannon and it was a summer's day and i was using a rust paint which is all browns and well yeah you know and i actually wore white shorts to the event and everyone said to me oh my goodness you're not going to go out looking clean do you know what i didn't have a speck on me honestly right so let's have a look oh i can see messy fingers says sarah lou sarah, sarah i'm sure there must be a filter or a bit of dirt on your screen seriously i didn't have any dirt on my fingers jean just wondering if after you have used clay could you use embossing powder on it like um so it looks like metal or patina right i'll be honest with you uh, jean if you use um hearty clay or fmm's bright and light clay okay and then um once it's actually dried and you want to paint it etc if you put a heat tool near it okay it will bubble so what i would suggest is if you want to do that sort of technique use das clay okay please uh take a look on my youtube channel i'll just run that advert again so you can see because there is um a video on there that i've done about popping that in the freezer so here's the information for my youtube channel <music> we have our own YouTube channel head over there to find Facebook lives inspiration craft demos exclusive videos and product reviews whilst you're there remember to click the like button subscribe to our channel and make sure you click the notifications button to receive notifications of brand new videos like subscribe get notifications youtube.com forward slash c forward slash mixed media arts and crafts so what I'm, what I'm also doing on my youtube channel at the moment to make it easy for you to actually find a section of the video i'm actually putting chapters on them so you can go straight to the point that you want and you don't then have to watch the whole video although obviously i'd like to watch the whole video right getting back to the comments yeah i think that's quite right actually if you're wanting to to do that as um sam actually suggests i think probably wax is probably the better of the two um let's have a look it's it's ink and something acrylic paint i struggle with getting off oh my goodness me let's have a look um i know washing powder is good <laughs> i'm a clean crafter too says uh sarah Lou. That almost rhymes doesn't it but there aren't many of us. No, we're called the Teflon, the Teflon gang. Clean craft? What's that? When it's at home? <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. Um, let's have, let's have a look. Um, and Kat says, "Thank you so much, Anthony, for a lovely evening." Well, do you know what? I'm 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 probably sure it wasn't as good as what's on TV. But do you know what? That's what crafting's all about. It's all about sharing and inspiring. You know, it's not about um, necessarily the person demonstrating. It's about the actual products and getting the most out of them and passing on all of that information that I've gained over. I think I've actually been uh, what they call professional crafting now for near on 15 years so i'm a bit of a a crafting dinosaur should we say the least um laura if you're still about you don't need to comment at that um, remark right so i think um like i say we'll call it a day because i don't want to drag on too long but you know what i've watched um some facebook lives and if they drag on too long you know you're probably nodding off so i'm gonna leave it at that like i say we do have three sections to go which probably is the the more interesting parts where i actually show you how i created all of the coloring there in the background and also um the coloring on the clock and some of those other cogs as well so like i say i will pop it up on my facebook page when i'm going to be doing that again like i say i'm going to be a little bit busy over the next week or so um so hopefully you'll be able to join me when i do that let me just make sure there's no other people just turn the glass off again 
Um, dum, dum, dum. Let's have a look. Um, Jean says, thank you. You are so, so welcome. Um, Blanche, glad you could join us, Blanche. Uh, a ple absolute pleasure. Uh, Sam says, thanks and great live. She called me a geek. She called me te a technical geek at the beginning of it. Nash, Nash is... Um, I'll, I'll part you with JCB keys. Don't worry. Um, Swarfiga is my friend. You know what? Swarfiga is something that... In the printing industry, they always used to use to wash their hands. It is really great, without a doubt. Um, Claire says, thank you. Uh, thanks, Anthony. Enjoyed. Absolute pleasure. Julie also says, thank you for the live night. Oh, good night there. Um, let's have a look. Book a stand at Ali Pallian, March. So can do a make and take. Do you know what? That sounds a really good idea. But I'm not sure if any of the companies that I'm sort of like I'm working alongside actually do that event, but that would be a good one. Ian Scott and mine. Yeah, sort of, yeah actually, I think it was Swarf Figure that um, Lauren and myself were talking about only a couple of weeks ago. How, how strange is that? Um, Sarah Tench, she says, great, thank you. Thanks, um, Ant. That's, that's absolutely my pleasure. Um, Sally says, great evening, Anthony. Thank you for an amazing live. And Blanche says, love your tips. Thank you so, so much for it. I'm, I'm going to have to put my glasses on because if I don't, I'll press the wrong button and goodness knows what could happen then. The whole world could come to an end. Right, well, that is it for... I'm just looking for the right one. Right, there we go. I, I, I found it now. So thank you all very, very much for watching. Hopefully um, you've learned a little bit of my crazy techniques. One of them being how to keep your hands so, so clean when <laughs> you craft. You know, people have always said that to me, like I say. So again, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And hopefully you can join me again. Spread the word, especially about my um, YouTube channel. And also, like I said, if you want that uh, link to getting this at six pound, six pound fifty a pack, six pound fifty a pack, absolute bargain. Um, please send me a private message, and honestly, I will get back to you straight away. Um, just um, a quick one again. Go over to the That's Crafty website for all of the um, other bits and bobs that I've used throughout this live. Like I say, it's the texture paste, which is an absolutely fantastic one to be using, and they also do lots of other stuff and. They've even got the new Tim Holtz colour, which I do believe is, um, what's it called? Villainous Purple or something? Can't quite remember. Um, but that's there. Let me just, I, I did see some more comments come up. Let's have a look. Um, let's have a look. Um, I get Lise to come and join. Join an absolute Lise Cook, yeah. Um, I um, Am I the only one who likes the smell? Okay, <laughs> what smell are you talking about? The small figure, maybe. Okay, um, Laura says, ladies, have fun. Thank you so much, Laura, for joining us. Um, always, always nice to have Laura, a very, very good friend indeed. Um, don't forget if Sarah and Vicky that run it now, yes, indeed, they do, from uh, Stamp Addicts, but it's just up the road from me in Bedford. Um, Joe Maiden says, great, thanks for explaining the background texture. Absolute pleasure, Joe. Like I say, the background texture is that one. It's texture paste from That's Crafty. Ian says, good night. Uh, villainous Potion, that's the one, Villainous Potion. Thank you very much, um, Sarah Lou. Do you know what? I'm talking again too much. I always do. Um, <laughs> right. I'm leaving it at that. Have a really wonderful evening, everyone else. And hopefully you can join me again real, real soon. Take care and happy crafting. <laughs>